Hey, did you guys know the fastest land mammal in India is an antelope? Yes, it's the black buck. Hey everyone, welcome to yet another episode of Epic Mammals of India. We are looking at smaller and spectacular mammals across the Indian subcontinent. Well, the mammal we are going to see today is a very special one. It's an aquatic one. Just to give you a clue, it's Hermione's Patronus Chum. I know you've read the species in the title. Otters are the special group of animals and they are increasingly becoming very rare and they've disappeared from a lot of their original habitat. And the mammal we're going to see today is Asian small clawed otter. And these are very different from all other otters and they are very special in their habitat, in their adaptations and also their role in the ecosystem. We're going to see more about Asian small clawed otters in the next few minutes. So stay tuned. Otters are called Nirna in Tamil, which is what a dog, because they are very intelligent and they are very ferocious. Otters are top predators in water ecosystem. There are about 13 species of otters across the world and India has three of them. Let's quickly see what these three species are. The first one is the smooth coated otter, which is present across Indian subcontinent. If you've seen an otter in your life, quite possibly by the law of probability, you would have seen a smooth coated otter because that's the most common otter across India. And the next one is the Eurasian otter, which is quite rare. If you see their distribution, Eurasian otter is present all the way across Europe to China to, North, uh, to uh, Southeast Asia. But in India, uh, their distribution passed through Himalayas, especially the Terai region. But later, uh, their distribution was found a little bit in Sapura in 2016, which is central India. And later their presence was also found in Western Ghats and very recently in Eastern Ghats as well. And they're also present in Sri Lanka. And the next one is our very own Asian small clawed otter. Asian small clawed otter is the smallest otter species in the world. It is custom made for hill streets. They are made for shallow waters. They are also present in Sudabans, uh, still shallow waters. They are present in uh, paddy fields and you know and marsh peats across uh, Southeast Asia. In India, you'll mostly see them around hill streams, all these pristine hill streams, both in Western Ghats or Eastern Ghats or even in uh, Himalayas. What makes them super special and what makes them very unique is not just that they are very tiny and very adorable, but also they have very interesting adaptations uh, based on the kind of food they eat. They like crustaceans and crabs. So they're super adapted to find these crustaceans, turn stones and you know, get there. Let's look at both these otters, small clawed and smooth coated otters. If you see smooth coated otter, you'll see the fingers have really strong claws and strong webbing, which makes it easy for them to you know, uh, dive in and swim across waters and then catch fishes. But if you see the small clawed otter, the claws are hardly there. There's hardly anything. And the webbings, even the webbings are very poorly developed. So the fingers are very dexterous and they can move freely, which means they can, you know, go turn stones and put their hand inside crevices, reach for these shrimps or crabs and, uh, and, and even uh, frogs and tadpoles. So a couple of things that make these animals really rare are, uh, one, they prefer very pristine hill streams. They're mostly seen in forest streams, high altitude, uh, you know, uh, streams, pools, puddles, so on and so forth. Uh, especially in grasslands, sholas, evergreen forests. So that's the kind of habitat that they prefer. Um, unlike smooth coated otters, which you can probably see in a lot of lakes and also rivers, even in plains. Another factor that makes them rare is uh, by behavior, they are nocturnal. They don't come out during daytime. They are uh, pretty much active during night or during the dawn and dusk. So that's the reason why most of the surveys even depend not on direct sightings, but on picking up signs like uh, scats or uh, markings and footprint. Now let's look at their adaptation for water. If you look at otters, they can stay underwater for about six to eight minutes and then come out for, uh, for breathing. So some of the adaptations that they have are their nostrils and ears can be closed. They can be closed water tight when they go underwater. And also uh, their skin. They have an underfur and also the long hairs outside. And this underfur packs a lot of air pockets. So this keeps them dry and insulated from, uh, from the cold waters. And every time they come out, they recharge these um, air pockets by grooming and, and, and 
rolling and playing with each other. That's why you see a lot of these social behavior in otters. You can relate otters to probably wild dogs where they live together as packs. Otters live in packs of about 7 to 15 and uh, most of the small clawed otters are seen in smaller packs uh, because of the size of the strings and in bigger strings they are present in larger numbers. But uh, they do have mating pair who is an alpha and the siblings take care of the younger ones. So that, that's how the social structure works where everyone is participating in bringing up the younger generation uh, feeding, taking care of them, grooming each other, so on and so forth. And in a community kind of uh, social structure, what is very important is communication. Communication is the key. So small cloud otters are said to have 12 different vocalizations. Uh, they use all these different vocalizations and communicate with uh, each other freely. And mostly in night times, you'll always hear uh, these otters when you're around. Yeah. Another form of communication these otters do is scat market. So, when they live together as community, like, what they do is they take their scat and they smear it around the surfaces with their hind limbs and tail. Uh, this is a community activity. So I mentioned to you earlier that they prefer pristine hill streams. So that is also a major threat for their survival. When these streams flow down, they flow down through tea estates, coffee estates, carbon plantations. So in these areas, there's a lot of risk of the streams being polluted by pesticides, effluents, and that kills a lot of biodiversity there. Yeah, when the biomass depletes in the stream, these otters disappear. So over uh, the last two or three decades, uh, we can say that these otters have been gradually moving upstream as the downstream water gets polluted, as their habitats uh, you know, gets diverted into different purposes. Because these otters completely depend on fallen logs and smaller rock crevices, and, and burrows that they dig on the on the, the stream banks to, for their survival. So these otters are poached for their pelts extensively. And in fact, almost 50% of all the otter pelts uh, that were seized are from India. So it is very India plays a very critical part both in their conservation, the habitat, and also in terms of controlling uh, poaching for their skins. So rightly so, small clown otters are Schedule 1 protected uh, in Indian Wildlife Act, which means they are given equal protection as a tiger or an elephant. Recently, uh, there's a village called Dab Hill in southern Maharashtra where a huge dam was supposed to engulf a lot of pristine Western Ghats forests. But the village went to the court and stopped this dam from coming in by citing the presence of uh, small cloud otters in these habitats and the whole dam project was called off. So this is a really, really uh, rare animal and, and uh, you cannot go looking for small cloud otters, unlike smooth cold otters. Uh, I was quite lucky. Uh, I was here in Dain Patkai uh, a couple of years ago and, uh, and I could see this lone small cloud otter swimming in the shallow waters and playing in the mud and you know sliding and doing all sorts of activities. Uh, so, so it was completely luck and that that is one of the best mo wildlife moments that I've had in my life. But you can try out different places like uh, Northeast India, of course, uh, Assam, or throughout Western Ghats, Walpare. All these places have a lot of streams that uh, have a good number of these uh, animals. But seeing them in daytime is still very difficult. You can probably look for signs and wait for them in dawn or dusk and take a chance. So if these otters start to disappear from the hill streams. We are taking out the apex predator from those hill streams, which means we are massively, massively disrupting the ecological chain there. And that will eventually affect the whole biomass down the stream. And it will eventually affect all our livelihoods. But a lot of organizations have started working on otters, uh, the wild otter project in Goa or uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of work happening in Valpare and there is Tungubhadra Otter Reserve where a 32 kilometer stretch is dedicated as Otter Sanctuary, which is first in India. So there is still light at the end of the tunnel and let's make sure that the light keeps shining bright. So I hope you enjoyed knowing a bit about small cloud otter, the smallest otter in the world. I'll see you next week with uh, something.